Hi, welcome. My name is Jeffrey Kusters. I'm a technology officer at ITQ. Uh, today I have with me a very special guest, Victor van der Berg. He's a VMware SE. And today we're talking about VMware Cloud and AWS. Um, so Victor, what, what, can you tell me something about the service? What, what capabilities are in there? And yeah, of course, uh, Jeffrey, thank you for having me, first of all. Uh, we're going to talk about VMware Cloud on AWS today. And VMware Cloud on AWS is a managed service offered by VMware uh, in uh, cooperation with Amazon. And it is a managed SDDC that you consume as a customer. That's what it is. And the nice thing about uh, VMware Cloud on AWS is that you can run your virtual machines that you know from your on-premises environment, your on-premises VMware environment, in, VM, in the VMware Cloud on AWS. So there's uh, no conversion required for your virtual machines to run them, conversion, to run them in AWS, VMware Cloud on AWS. Okay. So we can just pick them up and move them into VMware Cloud and AWS and run them just like they were. Exactly. Okay. You can move them to VMware Cloud on AWS, but of course you can also move them back to your on-premises data center. Might be even more important. Yeah, yeah, of course. So a second important feature or characteristic of VMware Cloud on AWS is that the capabilities you have in your on-premises data center um, are the same in VMware Cloud on AWS. So things like HA, vMotion, and also DRS, it's all there. Okay, so these are all additional capabilities on top of what we're used to in, in EC2, for example. Yeah, well, well EC2 is, is a, a native uh, virtual machine uh, service yeah. for AWS, and uh, that works a little differently. So with VMware Cloud on AWS, you have exactly the same kind of features, same kind of tools you can use. It's just a VMware environment, but it's consumed as, consumed as a service. So a third, third uh, important reason to use VMware Cloud on AWS is that you, consume, uh, you can consume the service in an OPEX model. It's a service, so you just pay for what you're using. Okay, and it's, it's on the VM level or on the host level? It's on the host level, on the host so level. You're, pay, yeah. you're paying for the number of hosts you're, you're using. That's actually what, uh, what's happening. Okay, so. Cool. All right. Um, yeah, so anything else you would like to share that makes this service uh, unique? Well, it might be interesting to have a close look on how availability is uh, managed for VMware Cloud on AWS. Yeah. And yeah, before we talk about uh, VMware Cloud specifically, it's uh, good to learn how availability is managed on an AWS cloud. So AWS is using what we call a region. And regions are available throughout the world. Yeah. Example region here in Europe is for example Frankfurt. Yeah. And in a region there are what they call availability zones. And most of the time there are three availability zones available in a region. Okay. Depends a bit on the region. So when you consume VMware Cloud on AWS, um, and you can consume a software-defined data center as a service, and the software-defined data center includes vSphere, vSAN, NSX. Um, the initial deployment, the smallest deployment for VMware Cloud on AWS is three hosts. And these three hosts will be deployed to one of the availability zones. So let's say you're requesting your first software-defined data center, yeah. it will be deployed to this availability zone. Okay, and is it nested virtualization or is it, how well, is it running? Um, this this software-defined data center is running on AWS bare metal hosts, okay. uh, so it's not nested. Okay, cool. And the nice thing to know is that with this first SDDC, VMware will provide you, will offer a, an SLA of 99.9%. 99.9% SLA, and it's offered on the SDDC level. So, not on the VM level, because that's up to you. Yeah. Your SDDC has an, uh, uh, has an SLA of 99.9%. Okay, cool. Because VMware manages the entire stack up yeah. until the vSphere layer, right? Correctly. Okay. Correct. Correct. Yeah. All right. So, 
if you want to enhance the availability, yeah. that, that's, that might be a question. Yeah. Yeah. Then you have the option to stretch your STDC to a second uh, availability zone. Okay, because an availability, can I see this just like a physical data center or? Well, actually an availability zone is a data center. Okay. And for, okay. for if you talk about Frankfurt, for example, yeah. these different availability zones or data centers are in the Frankfurt area. Okay, but they're all physically separated, isolated. About 13, okay. 40 kilometers okay. is the distance between those different availability zones. So we can stretch a software-defined data center. We can stretch the VMware Cloud on AWS data center. And what that means is that we put uh, some host in the second AZ as well. And we get a stretch cluster configuration with the fees and storage underneath. And also a so-called witness node. As a tiebreaker for... As a tiebreaker yeah. is deployed to the third AZ, uh, availability zone. And this will increase your SLA to 99.99%. Four nines. Four Sounds nines. Sounds good. Yeah. yeah, sounds good. So this is one of the options you have to increase your availability. Okay, what if I want to protect my SEDC on a regional level? Uh, you can do that as well. And <coughs> in that case, we have to work with a secondary region. So I will draw a additional region here, uh, and this region again has different uh, availability zones, of course. And what we can do, and of course all depends a bit on your exact requirements, yeah. but you can spin up a additional SDDC in this second region, yeah. and then we can consume an additional service on top on, of the existing VMware Cloud on AWS service, and that's what we call VMware Site Recovery. And VMware Site Recovery is, well, let's call it SRM, Site Recovery yeah. Manager as a Service. So what, did, what this means is that we have an uh, additional service on top of the service we are consuming. Yeah. We will have vSphere replication in place, and vSphere replication will take care of replicating data from region A to region B, or maybe even between those regions. So you can also you replicate can do, it back if you want. You can do cross, uh, cross site failovers. Cool. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, it sounds a lot like Site Recovery Manager as I know it from back in the day. Yeah. So, uh, cool. Well, actually, it is Site Recovery Manager as a service. It uh, includes vSphere replication for the replication but also um, uses the orchestrated uh, fillover features. So uh, in case of a failure of the region, you can start your recovery plan and your VMs will um, uh, yeah, fill over to the other uh, region. Just according to the runbook, startup priorities, all the stuff that, we, that we're used to with Site Recovery Manager. Exactly, exactly. Awesome, cool. Yeah. Last inter uh, interesting option to yep. you know, if you are running a on-premises data center yeah. with your own private cloud, private SDDC. You can also consume the VMware Site Recovery services in a on-premises scenario to the cloud. Okay, so you can protect your on-prem data center using uh, Site Recovery as a yeah. service. So in the same, actually in the same way, using vSphere replication to replicate the data to the cloud and do an orchestrated fillover in case of an uh, emergency. That's cool. Awesome. Yeah. So. All right. Well, I think this, this makes it very clear that um, VMware Cloud and AWS provides, you know, enterprise-grade availability yeah. for all types of workloads. Um, yeah. Thank you very much, Victor, for explaining this stuff. And, um, well, thank you for watching. And make sure to, uh, to stay tuned on this channel for more content on VMware Cloud and AWS. Thanks.